Good morning. My name is Mark Krikorian. I'm executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, a think tank here in Washington that examines and critiques the impact of immigration on the United States. Uh, as our name suggests, we don't have views on things other than immigration. Uh, the center has no stance supporting or opposing any kind of uh, reform on health care. Um, our staff and board almost certainly have a pretty wide variety of views on health care as well as a variety of other issues. But health care being such a big part of the economy and such an important thing, obviously, in people's lives, there's a significant intersection between the work the center does on immigration and something like health care. Uh, and there, I think we do have uh, a contribution to make. There has been some discussion already of um, the immigration aspects of the health care issue. From our perspective, that's been limited, though, because it's been mainly about the issue of legal status. In other words, uh, will illegal immigrants be subsidized by some taxpayer-funded health care program? And that's an important aspect of the issue, and our speakers will touch on it to some degree or another. But the important thing, I think, is to understand that um, the problem, if you see it as a problem, of uh, immigration as it relates to health care is not strictly one of legal status. It's not limited to illegal immigration, as important as that is. It's the question of immigration overall and the impact it has on uh, health care, because illegal immigrants are not different species. They're people like anybody else. They come from the same countries as legal immigrants, same families. In fact, a lot of times they're the same people flipping back and forth, back and forth between legal and illegal status. So to understand, uh, to use, to coin a phrase, comprehensively, the impact of immigration on the health care issue, you need to look at all immigration, uh, not just illegal immigration, as important as that is. And that's what uh, we aim to do here today. Our first speaker is probably uh, one of the nation's leading experts on the issue of immigration, Stephen Camerata, the research director uh, here at the Center for Immigration Studies. Second speaker will be James R. Edwards, Jr. Jim is a fellow with CIS, uh, co-author of the Congressional Politics of Immigration Reform, and for many years has worked in both immigration policy field, but also in the health policy field. And so he'll have a lot to be able to um, bring to this discussion. And last but not least is Robert Rector uh, from the Heritage Foundation, uh, probably the nation's leading scholar on the issue of welfare reform, and over the past several years has been doing significant research on the issue of immigration and its effects on public uh, services and costs and what have you. So um, the three speakers will uh, say their piece, and then we'll take Q&A from people if anybody has any questions. Steve? Thanks, Mark. As Mark said, I'm Steve Camerata. I'm Director of Research at the Center for Immigration Studies here in Washington. Now, as Congress and the nation debate health care reform, the impact of immigration is or should be an important part or component of that debate. Now, whether illegal immigrants get uh, access to some new government program or public option has been discussed to some extent, but the overall impact of immigration has not really been discussed. As Mark pointed out, we at the Center for Immigration <laughs> Studies don't have a position on what form health care reform should take. I am personally sympathetic to some of the President's proposals, um, but that's not the focus of my discussion. Instead, I'm going to discuss what the data tell us about the impact of immigration on the nation's health care system. Um, I'm going to primarily um, rely in this discussion on data collected by the government. And what I think that data is going to show is that um, it is very difficult to imagine getting our health care house in order without getting our immigration house in order, if you will. Um, in my presentation, as I said, I'm going to rely primarily on government data. Uh, the current population survey from 2008, which is the most recent data available. Um, it asks about your health insurance coverage in the previous year, the previous calendar year. So that would be how much coverage you had in 2007. Um, 
The survey is collected by the U.S. Census Bureau and is really in most ways our primary source of information on health insurance coverage in the United States for any uh, population. Uh, let me also point out that most of the information that I'll cover today is also available at our website, www.cis.org. Now, in 2007, 33% of immigrants, of all immigrants, legal and illegal, did not have health insurance compared to about 13% of native-born Americans. Immigrants account for, by themselves, account for 27.1% of all U.S. residents without health insurance. We can see this in figure one, which is to my right, right here. Figure one shows that immigrants are 12.5% of the nation's total population, but they are 27.1% of the uninsured. Again, this is just the immigrants themselves. If we can keep uh, the camera on figure one just a little longer, uh, let me discuss some additional information. Of course, the impact of immigration is not just confined to the immigrants themselves. Immigrants, of course, also have children whom they are often unable to provide health insurance for. If the children who are born here, the US-born children of immigrants who are under the age of 18 are included with their immigrant parents, then together, as figure one shows, they comprise 31.9% of all those without health insurance. Now, to place this figure in context, figure one also shows that immigrants and their kids are about 16.8% of the total population, so about twice their share of the uninsured relative to their share of the total population. Or put simply, this means that about one out of every three people in America without health insurance is either an immigrant, legal or illegal, or the U.S.-born child of an immigrant. The total number of immigrants and their children without health insurance is 14.5 million in 2007. Why that's so important? Because what it tells us, just obviously, is that when we're talking about the uninsured in this country, which is a big part of the current debate we're having, immigration is a very large part of that story. But of course, it's not the whole story. It's just a large fraction of it that is often not adequately acknowledged. There is another way of thinking about the impact of immigration on the size of the uninsured population. We can look at how much of the growth in the uninsured or increase in the uninsured is from immigration. Now, the government reports that since 1999, the number of uninsured people is up in the United States, about 6.4 million. In 2007, there were 5 million immigrants who had arrived in the United States since 1999 who didn't have health insurance. So if we just take the 5 million and divide it by 6.4 million, what we find is that 78% of the growth in the uninsured is attributable to these newly arrived immigrants, or it equals 78% of that growth. And if we add in their US-born children who are uninsured, then that figure gets to be over 85%. In other words, if we had had no immigration after 1999, most of the growth in the uninsured would not have occurred. Um, now, immigration does not only impact the size of the uninsured population when we think about the healthcare system. It also plays a role in the Medicaid system. Medicaid is the primary government program that provides health insurance to people with low incomes. Now, it goes by different names. Like in California, you may have heard of Medi-Cal, but it's really just Medicaid. And in some parts, there's also a special program for children referred to sometimes as S-CHIP. But again, it's all Medicaid. So when we talk about here Medicaid, we're talking about the big program, whatever name uh, we, we talk about it under. In 2007, 19% of immigrants and their U.S.-born children were on Medicaid. Um, and we can actually combine the share who are on Medicaid with the share who are uninsured. And figure two over to my left has some pie charts that does that. What figure two shows is that 47.6% of immigrants and their U.S.-born children were either uninsured or on Medicaid. That means that almost half of immigrants and their children 
have no health insurance or have it provided to them by the government. In comparison, the bottom of figure two shows, if you could see it, and I don't know if you can, that about 25%, so about one-fourth. So it's one-half of immigrants and about one-fourth of natives and their children don't, uh, don't have health insurance or have it provided by Medicaid. Now, the question you're probably all wondering is, why? Why are so many immigrants uh, in the United States lacking in health insurance? The large share of immigrants without health insurance is partly explained by the large share who have very low levels of education. About one-third of all immigrants, legal and illegal, did not complete high school in their home country, which means that they typically work at jobs that don't provide insurance and their resulting low incomes from their lower levels of education means that they often can't afford it on their own. In fact, among illegal immigrants, we estimate that about 55% didn't graduate from high school in their own home country. Among all immigrants, legal and illegal, it's about a third. We can see the importance of immigration to this question by just looking at some simple statistics. If we look at college-educated immigrants, 15% are uninsured. If we look at immigrants who didn't graduate high school, half are uninsured. So a big part of this story is education, but it's not just education. Cultural and other factors also seem to play a role. If we look at affluent immigrants who have a college degree and compare them to affluent natives with a college degree, the immigrants are still two and a half times more likely not to have health insurance. So something else is going on. These are people, when I say affluent, um, it depends on your definition, but I was looking at households of $75,000 a year or more. So these are people who should be able to afford health insurance. They have a college degree, so they should be able to recognize its importance and why they might want to have it. So, but again, the, the immigrants in that position are much less likely to have insurance than natives in that position. Now, there are some other reasons for this, and that is that immigrants often come from countries where health insurance is not that common. Or they often come from countries where it's provided by the government automatically. And I think these two factors also play some significant role in why immigrants who would seem very likely to have it given their education and income still often choose not to. Now one thing that we can also say is lack of health insurance among immigrants is not caused by immigrants' unwillingness to work. In 2007, about three quarters of all immigrants held a job. And that's exactly the same percentage as for you know, adult natives. There's no fundamental difference in the share who work. This is not being caused by immigrants, say, you know, sitting home and not being willing to work. Again, rather the reason so many don't have health insurance is their low educational attainment. There is no single better predictor of how an immigrant is going to do in the modern American economy than their education levels. And this is true whether we were to look at welfare use, income, home ownership, or health insurance coverage. Now, so far we've only talked, or I've only talked about all immigrants and their kids, um, but what about legal status? In an earlier study, we've estimated that 64% of illegal immigrants are uninsured, and they account for about one out of seven people in the United States without health insurance. And if we were to count their U.S.-born children, then it's more like one out of every six people without health insurance in the United States is an illegal immigrant. Um, so these are some big numbers, but it's not, again, the whole story. Again, about 7 million uninsured illegal immigrants. That number is about 8 million when we count their U.S. children. Now, what about the costs? Because that's what I think a lot of folks are concerned about. Now, we are in the process of trying to develop some more um, precise estimates. But right now, our best estimate is that we're spending about $4 billion a year providing health care to illegal immigrants. Now that is just public expenditures, $4 billion. It's a little more if you count their U.S. born children. Now it is also important to note that uninsured Ill illegal immigrants use significantly less in health care than uninsured native born Americans. They're just dramatically more likely to be uninsured in the first place. This is because they tend to be younger than native born Americans and so health care costs generally rise with age the illegals are relatively young, so they tend to cost 
less than uninsured natives. They're just much more likely to be uninsured in the first place. Also, although the stereotype is that illegal immigrants go to the emergency rooms all the time, very often, this is not really correct. The problems illegal immigrants create for emergency rooms is not so much that they go more often than the rest of the population. Rather, it is that when they go, they are much more likely not to pay. And that's why it's a problem. Remember, 13% of native-born Americans are uninsured, so they pay vast, m the vast majority of the time. But s more than 60% of illegal immigrants are uninsured, so they often don't pay. Thus, when illegal immigrants use emergency health care, there is often no corresponding stream of revenue going to the emergency room to offset all the costs they create. This is the reason emergency rooms get so overcrowded in areas with lots of illegal immigrants. Illegal immigrants are using the system without paying for the system at much higher levels. We can also calculate the cost to taxpayers of the whole thing, of what legal and illegal immigrants cost, and if we put in their US-born children who are uninsured as well, and that's about $11 billion a year from public coffers. Now, charity and the illegals themselves and the immigrants themselves pay on top of that, but the cost to taxpayers from all immigrants who are uninsured and their US-born children, we're estimating at about $11 billion a year. And this takes into account that the immigrants tend to be younger and use less care, but are, all, of course, much more likely to be uninsured in the first place. Now, what if we tried to provide Medicaid to, say, um, uninsured